All right, today I'll be making um, some simple strawberry pies. Um, you're gonna wanna get yourself uh, your strawberries. Um, I'll be doing, um, compared to what I usually do, but large pies uh, today. Um, you will want roughly one pound uh, per pie. Um, these are the, these are, you know, pounds, uh, how they come. All right, you're gonna wanna grab yourself a paring knife and a pot. Um, I guess come back over here. All right, I like to be near the sink, but uh, I guess you can go anywhere you want. A little container to throw your little scraps in. Um, should be rather quick. All right, but uh, I'm gonna throw my strawberries in the sink as I do them, uh, just so I can wash them before I actually put them in my pot. Anyways, uh, you know, try to get the, the white, if there's any chunks of white that's left with them. If you see any blemishes you don't like, you can throw them in the pot, wash them if you want, whatever. I just like to usually just throw them in there. If there's a sand or grit, it's usually hard to drain back out of, out of here. Um, some blemishes, you know, if your strawberries are just starting to dry just a bit out, I don't know how well you can, uh, you know, um, see. Yeah, that's not, there's no bad there, but you can see they just start to dry a bit and you get just a hair bit of dryness. It's nothing bad at all. You know, you're just making sure you're not looking for anything bad itself rotting. Okay. Alright, so. And now, now. They have a little heart. I don't know how many people know their strawberry. Um, I'll just see if I can maybe. If you pick them up and they, when they break, see, and it leaves, you'll get all that off. The thing is, is you want to get in there and literally get that little bit of heart that's right there. That doesn't taste very good. Again, you can see there's just little, little hair blemishes on there, but it hasn't no mold or nothing bad or anything. You know, just like a little banana, when it goes, it gets a little bruise on it. All right. Strawberries, uh, you know, you can get them local, depending on where you live in the world. But, uh, just, uh, for myself, I have a strawberry patch in the back, but I only get strawberries for about three months of the year. And you can freeze them, but um, I <laughs> my strawberry patch, I guess it's about uh, 30 foot long um, and four, uh, two, two and a half feet wide. And uh, it produces quite a few strawberries, but I had to put a cage on top because uh, robins, they, they, they show up at the same time of the year that the strawberries are starting to come out. And uh, they, it's their favorite. Okay, here's a little strawberry that doesn't look the best here. I'm just going to cut the bottom off. I don't actually want the whole strawberry. It just, just looks a little too, too dark for me. It was still solid, but it was just a little too dark for me. Now, if you throw this all out, there's a good chance you'll get strawberries from them, um, all the seeds. But you don't want to waste a lot of your strawberry. That's why I used a little paring knife. All right, there's our first container done. Alright, 
see. Going real nice and quick. I should say I turn the, when I put in the tip of my knife, I put it in and I, I try to lift with my thumb at the same time the leaves and I go around the, I go around it. Um, but I keep the tip so it's at all times it's under the, see, ooh, that one pulled the right out of heart, complete center, but that's because if you actually see the inside of this strawberry, it's actually, there's a air space in there, so that one pitted out real nice and easy. Alrighty. Okay, this one's got a little bit of a bad spot here. I don't want that. The rest of the strawberry looks delicious. What happens when they get packed in here too hard sometimes too, they cause themselves damage by the way they get packed. ones you can maybe slice up the middle. Hey, get down, get down, get down. I know, don't yell me. Alright. Just slice them um yeah down the middle so you're pretty much getting you don't have to make these all fancy but you just uh slicing them this way wouldn't exactly give you as uh, the opening because now you get all the meat and flesh um shown out there. Alright Now it may look like a lot, but they're going to break down when they they start cooking. That's another reason um, I don't. Some people I know will put a pie. You know, you get back down. Get back down. That's right. She's talking back to me. She wants to perch and watch me. She'd probably eat a strawberry if I let her. All right. pounds cleaned up and looks like and sliced the way we want right because that is pretty much you know it's pretty close to the top so anyways there we're gonna turn this over to here we're gonna stick that on the burner there we're gonna put her on low or right on low uh oh it should be over here yeah, sorry okay so now we got this put down on low um, I'm just put, rinse my hands off and the knife. Okay, so now what you're going to want to do is get yourself um, a tablespoon uh, measuring um, and a measuring cup. In the measuring cup, you can put yourself about an eighth of, about an eighth of a cup of water. You just want to, just a little bit, grab yourself a tablespoon, 
You'll want to grab yourself sugar. Now, um, these are big pies, but uh, you can choose how much sugar you're actually going to want in here. I myself, um, I'm, I'm going to put two, uh, I'm going to heap them too, but I'm going to put two tablespoons, one two, per pie. So I got four tablespoons for myself in here. All right. Now, in the water, you're going to want to grab, or not grab, but scoop out two tablespoons of flour. Alright, now go ahead and mix that up. Okay, now you're going to want to grab yourself a potato masher. Alright, so now I'm going to pour that uh, right in over top here and grab yourself about another eighth of a cup. I got just a little more than that, but there you go. Off the masher, and force everything down. You're not mashing yet, just force everything down like you're mixing it. And try to get everything packed down in there tight. So now, um, that I've shoved this all down. Here we go, get a little closer. You can see, you know, I've pushed that down almost an inch more than it was. And I can actually see the juice down in the bottom almost coming up. All right. Oh, let's drop it on the loose. All right. Like I said, it was just a little, I put a, more than an eighth of a cup in here. I'm just going to set this aside right now, but just all it had was flour in it, so. Alrighty, um, now uh, while this is on low, what you're going to want to do is grab yourself two cups of flour. Um, I'm grabbing mine from the freezer. Um, maybe I'll fly over here and show you where I go. Boom, boom. Right, so you'll want two cups of flour myself. Um, I always say make extra, but tonight I'm actually making something else too, other than this. So I'm going to be putting myself four cups. Ba -ba -boom. All right, so now four cups. One, two, three. Four for myself, like I say, and I always say make a you know, I'm just gonna put about a quarter cup more, you know, I'm not being a little perfect or anything. All right, so you would have yourself two in there. Now, for every cup of flour, I guess we'll turn back over here now. All right, that's pretty good. Now, for every cup of flour, you're going to want uh, at least an eighth of a cup. Of, uh, at least an eighth of a cup of uh, shortening, butter, lard, you know, some form of, you know, fat, I guess to say. Um, so anyways, uh, just, uh, you know, there are marking thingies here on there. If you were to look now, uh, I need an eighth of a cup. Um, that's be a, be about an eighth of a cup there. That'd be about another eighth. There's another one there, and we'd be about here. So if you know about how much you want, what I like to do is just pick off the butter in chunks, and you can see how it's just breaking up pieces. I don't go all the way through. 
is a good way to uh, just get your butter out and started. Now this comes out of the fridge for me so it's cold and the um, flour is frozen from the freezer. Make sure not to stab your fingers on the other side. I'm actually going to slide right down there now. There you go. Now, now that's a, a minimum of how much butter or you want. You can go up to a, an eighth of a quarter cup per cup of flour too. So it never hurts to do a little more. Um, it's just, it would be a little more tender, more or less. Okay. Now I did a, probably in between the two there tonight for this. Uh, so I haven't had a strawberry pie in a while. Now, um, my butter happens to be uh, unsalted butter. So you're going to want to put a little salt in there. And a little salt in there. So, uh, so now, um, get yourself some table salt. Um, something people didn't may not know about table salt. Um, uh, you, there, there's coarse salt. Um, people, some people call it pickling salt. That is, uh, you know, it's big, big stuff. You can actually put it in a pepper grinder and grind it. That is 100% salt. Um, table salt, or iodized salt, some people will call it, actually uh, has more than just salt in it. Um, salt, calcium silicate, sugar and potassium iodide. Now, um, the iodide they put in, in um, to balance the, the health of human beings because uh, so we don't get <laughs> I, uh, um, uh, uh, iodine deficiencies. Uh, so anyways, you just need to put a pinch. You don't need to put very much per cup, um, you know. So I'm just gonna put a little sprinkle in here. Let me dash more. Okay, now I'm just, I can see a little bubbling coming up, like I say. The juices are starting, so I'm actually going to push right down and get everything turned. Okay, here we go. Now it's uh, it'll start. It should start to at least foam in here. Uh, get a little foamy, I should say. Okay, and it just smells like strawberries right now. That's all I can smell in here: strawberries. Um, I'm just going to. Just, I'm just putting a dash more heat to it. Now, um, your uh, um, butter and flour, now we've got a little bit of salt in here. I'm just gonna clean the fork off, put a little flour on it, and then I'm gonna just clean it down to make sure I get all the butter off the fork. All right, I don't wanna waste any of the butter. All right, now, um, if you just cover all your broken up little lumps and clumps there, like that. Now you can see they're just big chunks in here. If you've ever seen uh, the other videos I have. If you just take one of your clumps like this and you squeeze it now, so now it gets all flat. I can even do, do you know. So now it's really, really flat. Now that's what you wanna do. Now don't just push it like that. What you do at the same time is twist in your fingers and, and let it drag along. Now if you do, um, both at the same time. Let me see you get a little closer here. Okay. Um, let me just. Uh, oh, my hand. Okay. So uh, here we go. So you got a lump like this here, oh, over here. Okay. What you do is squeeze it. So when you squeeze it, that's your butter lump. Okay. Now a bunch just fell off there because every time I see. So now it's really, really super thin. Now, again, when you start with a lump, a big clump like that or something. You know, so you just start, and you'll just start breaking up. Now, by just twisting while you do it or, or dragging along your finger, it adds the flour to it, and it spreads it really, really thin. And that's what you want, really, really thin little areas of fat, essentially. So, I just work the two hands, and you just go in and twist. If you got kids, kids like to do this. 
kind of feels like plasticine. You're squeezing plasticine. Um, Play-Doh, if you will. So, or a really nice textured clay, <laughs> which is plasticine. But anyways, see, so you just you're rubbing it now if you if you got too much butter on your finger and not enough flour it all just start sticking to your finger so that's why I'm I, I stay inside here if I can the best and you just keep twisting now you can try to break it up with your fork but because the flour is frozen and the butter see that big clump right there and the butter's frozen um, it actually are, are really cold and now it's pretty much frozen in here it's actually really stiff this will give your hands a workout <laughs> But it is about the most efficient way to get all your flour and your um, little, all these lumps here, another big lump there. To get them all broken up and evenly distributed. Also getting your salt in here mixed in nice. Keep an eye, uh, I don't know how hot you would put your stove, you shouldn't put too hot if you got somebody else but I can see just slightly with the foam but I can just see the foam moving a little with the bubbling action just I don't actually see any big pockets yet but they're starting the idea is is um the strawberries break down and if you were gonna put them in the oven right away um, what's gonna happen is your pie is gonna settle essentially smaller than it was but a whole bunch of juice is end up going to coming when it collapses. So instead of uh, essentially collapsing or having any of those problems, hopefully we'll stop all that from happening. So now I'm just actually got it pretty small, everything right now. So I can actually use both the hands and just roll and rub, making sure to get everything in there down to the same morsel sizes. It's just like crumbs in here is what you're going to look like. Not everything just turned to crumb. But the crumbs are like little tiny, you know, f uh, f you know uh, f flakes, I should say, more or less. Not crumbs, but flakes. So, and that's what's going to make the flaky crust. All right, so you just don't want any large lumps or clumps. So you can almost see it's a, the perfect little... Uh, uh, they come out so perfect they're stuck a little few of them to my finger they just come out perfectly and that's going to give us our thin little little bubbles and air gaps in our in our pastry when for the for the pie itself all right so that's done now you could do this with warm butter and warm dough and be be done with just a fork and be done really really quickly but then you're going to get a stiff a stiffer dough or then you end up having to wait and cool it for a good period of time in the fridge or freezer so uh, this essentially just kind of cuts out the step and a you know saves the fridge time you know maybe a little more energy and elbow grease but I also think it comes with a better peat or a better crust for the dough all right so now we're done this I'm just gonna do the best to clean off my fingers here I'm just going to squish this down again and now yeah you can really tell this that it started here some of the strawberries are completely not dissolved but uh, squishable with no problem the ones that were down at the bottom in the sauce now it just looks like that now I've done that. It just looks like gosh, maybe I can go over here and you can see it. Just looks like you barely can see strawberries. They're in there, but uh you know it's mostly just it looks like juice because it's all coming up to the top. So I'm just gonna dash it up a little more because I know about my time here. Okay, probably going to turn it down again. Now I'm going to grab myself a cup of water. Alright, 
put yourself a pocket here not all the way down to the bottom but just so you can pour and then you can just right back on top of it there you go now you don't want to um, squish stuff together here is what you don't want to do you want to let everything just kind of come together without actually forcing anything together okay I'm just gonna again like that water another half a cup Well, like I say, I made uh, twice as much as I need. But that is uh, because I plan on doing something else with it. Stir my stir this again real quick. Now you can see how fast I can do this, and it's not like making a mess. clean the side of my bowl here.
Okay. You can pretty much see that. I'll just set this aside here. But you can see the that it's workable. Yet still not too wet. Alright, so now you're supposed to get four pies out of this. So cut her in half. Ready? Cut that in half. And these are big pies too, so. Alright, so. Now that right there is essentially the top and bottom for a pie. And so is this. Right now, I don't know if you can actually see this. Um, oh, you know, wait, yeah, you can. I get the lighting just right. You can see all the butter. Um, see, there's some right, oh, right there. Over, yeah, see another pee, pee, pee. So, you know, these are the areas of the butter. So anyways, um, we're just gonna put her aside for like that. Uh, actually cut her in half, I cut it in half itself. And cut the other one in half too. All right. Now, if you just work a little bit, not very much, but just try to make a cylinder and get all the edges so they're not bad. Now, I keep a flower nearby. All right, so now I have a preformed little piece right one. I'm going to do the other one right away too. Okay, you can do them just down on the and the reason is is because the margarine or the margarine the butter is going to start to melt here and you want it to melt into formed position uh, while it starts so it doesn't cause you trouble later all right there's that one all right that edge is pretty important to a dough especially when you're rolling it makes it a lot easier all right all right again just like that Kind of like you would do a hamburger patty to make sure you get a uniform to good edge, right? But you're leaving them thick for now, All right? Okay, so put yourself down your flour. Now you're gonna want. To, uh, I'm gonna mash this up real quick again. Now I can turn that off. Now I'm going to pull up my pie plates. Now just to explain, um, you, know, uh, you know, you can see a size difference that's greatly and uh, the thickness difference uh, uh, is quite, quite different. So, you know, this would be a big difference in a pie size. So I'll be making high pie today because of the style that I'm making. I'm going to want two of them. Um, I don't need the lids. I just made extra because of the extra stuff, but I would just sh to show you what they look like. Um, all right, so you're going to want two pies for this. Obviously, you can see how much sauce I'm pretty much gotten here, and I don't want it to overboard in the, or hopefully it doesn't overboard in the stove. This is another reason I started cooking it and getting the, the water contents back cooked out of it um, to a degree, even though I added some. Uh, But, see, you can see it. All right. Now, uh, I could probably make three, judging by how much I actual, unless I had a higher side one, but, uh, which I actually, oh, I actually do have higher side pie plates, but, uh, I'll just make two. All right, so. All right. It also depends how thick you like your crust, but run for over here now. Right. 
Now it's as it grows, it's the flower that um, that it's picking up that actually help it helps it keep its size. All right. So now, uh, you, you, if you want, you measure your pie plate. Make sure it's bigger because the minute you pick it up, it's going to start shrinking. All right. If you put it into quarters, it's easy to transport. Um, you just put it down your like this and like that, like that, and then you won't get no tears or issues with it. All right. So here's your first first dough in. All right. Now what I'm actually going to do is leave it aside. Put it over here actually. And I'm going to make the next bottom right away. Now that I'm starting this one, turn your stove on to 350. Could have started it a few minutes ago, but to start it way off at the beginning would have been a great waste of hydro. Essentially, you just don't want the element to be on for a long period of time when you're cooking, so it doesn't cook in, uh, in, in, a, in a you know an un, you know not the way things are intended to cook, where where it's small bursts of heat that turn on in there. Boy, that smells good. All right. Try not to get any uh, 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 dough that over sags on each, or you might get an area that doesn't cook the same. So anyways, you can see uh, the edge of the pie all the way around. Now, uh, I'm actually quite certain that I have enough to do a third one here. So I'm actually going to make a third pie. Um, and, uh, without a problem. Alright. Right, so I guess I'm making three pies. Strawberry pies. Could have made them a lot higher, but I didn't want to take the chance that they would spill over. I could have used my, I could have, maybe even show you those. I got all different heights of pie. Well, that's why I brought down the pie plates already. Variable uh, heights and sizes. Uh, 
I reuse a lot of mine, but you can see all the different, you know, heights and sizes I have. But uh, there's, that's just one of the little piles. But, uh, try to use some of the nicer ones for the videos. All right. Okay, so you see how the, the dough goes here and make sure to spread it out so it doesn't fold on itself and you got a thick area of dough. All right. There you go. That's it. That's all. Now, uh, what you can do here is because uh, of the style of pie I got is get yourself your um, this now and just go around and cut your pie side and you push down like it's a, a scissoring action trimmings there All right. like now a lot of people actually have trouble making see my other videos I sure I do different lids but um, this is a cause it's, it's it's a paste unlike like if you made something like apple pie which you know the apple is a has still a texture that it shouldn't let something drop in on itself but this because it's a it's very juicy um it essentially would always get over top of anything anything you made would always get over run over top and you know do some burning and this this make it look ugly I say you could have made two pies and just made a really thick one or if you know don't mind the mess all right so I'm just gonna give this the final little squishing I'm trying to ensure I don't have any lumps larger lumps I should say now I'm grab a big spoon Okay, grab my big spoon. Get all the pulp there. Essentially like a puree in here. All right, so now what I'm going to do, let's see, I'm gonna make sure this is mixed well. I'm gonna pour just a, a little bit at a time in each. Make sure I get it evenly. I know I could have done it in two, but I don't mind a little extra crust. Never hurts nobody. Three pies, turn on the light, 
We're gonna throw our timer on right away. And these I'm only gonna put in for 20 minutes and get back to them. Right, so start. And now I have uh, something drying in here. I should have uh, taken out. When I wash my, when I wash my big pans, when I wash my pans here, I always put them in the oven just to dry them out fast. Alrighty. There. Okay. Back to this. Alright. There we go. Now those are big, so that fills up the stove just nice. Got 20 minutes on that. All right, I'll come back in 20 minutes. I'll be cooking uh, something else, uh, like I say, with the rest of my dough here. So um, hopefully I don't get caught in the two. All right, it's been uh, 15 minutes. Um, I'm just gonna turn my pies. I should grab the, the gloves for this, just to show the speed here. Ah. Yeah, speed and you gotta get hooked. Okay, so um, they are grabbing color. So what I'm gonna do is give them a little turn real quick. Okay, so the one this, I had them two in the back and one in the front. I'm gonna turn them 180 and then put the one I had in the front in the back. And I'm gonna 180 this one, bring them up to the front and then 180 him and put him on the front here. All right, let them have five, four, well, probably four minutes by now. All right, and I'll be back. Uh, you know, I didn't mention to have that little break, but some people don't turn them. I just like to. All right, back in five minutes. All right, been 20 minutes now. Beep, beep, beep's going on. Just gonna shut it off. Um, I'd say shut your oven off uh, right now, but for myself, I'm going to be using it again. All right, anyways, I'll be pulling up the first pie. Second one. Pull up the third one. Now, if you want to give your pie a little look, make sure it, uh, you can even pick it up and give it a little look. It looks nice to me. I can, you know, clearly I could pick it up and it wasn't going to break. It's not sticking. I can touch it with my finger. If you feel like letting it cook a little longer, you can. Um, I'd say no more than five minutes more. Um, you can see the gold, all the crust is golden on here. Now what I'm personally gonna do is uh, let these cool off. Um, they're clearly very hot and you can see they jiggle um, when you do that. Um, I'm gonna let these cool off for at least a half hour and then I'm actually gonna be putting them in the one in the refrigerator, the other two will go in the freezer, and then I, I will eat them actually when they're, uh, they've firmed up from the cold. Um, I like cold pie, not hot pie either. This is a cold served pie. Now, uh, once they're cooled, um, I don't personally like whipped cream, but a lot of people do, and if I was gonna make them this, that depth in here, how you, it fills a nice cream pie, you can just put, you know, if you have to spray cream or hand cream if you make it yourself, Anyways, uh, that takes a nice nice area of cream. So you got a, a beautiful strawberry pie that, you know, if you want, you can turn it into a cream pie. Anyways, um, and you can still, because um, I haven't overcooked them or anything like that, you could still uh, heat these back up if you did want them in a, in a warm fashion and they wouldn't go too bad. But anyways, you can see clearly, you know, like I, I can touch and you can hear that, you know, it sounds like, like that on the outside down in there so anyways hope you enjoyed a nice simple uh, homemade strawberry pie all right I uh, have the pie cooled off now finish supper uh, dee 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 so um, I guess you can see the pie here. See, it doesn't run or anything like that. The juicy. In fact, I can pick the pie right out of the right out of the tin just like that. See, 
Now you can see the back here is uh, not, not overcooked or anything like that, not undercooked. Clearly I wouldn't be able to pick it up if it was undercooked. Alright, we want a fork and a knife and a little plate. Ooh, we, we, yeah. Alright, so you can cut into quarters or six. You'll see it's very, uh, very, more like a jam, I guess to say. Right. You can hear a nice crunch on the dough. Now you can put them, I like quarters myself, you can cut them into sixths if you got, you know, guests or something. There to cut. Show all the way through. Oh, right there. Okay. Now, just pick you up. Now you can see clearly it's not, it's not falling or anything like that. You can see this pie here. I just took it out. Mm -hmm. All right, so um, just to show you how beautiful this pie looks, you know, it's a. Uh, so I think that's that's a nice looking piece of pie. Um, like I say again, look, I can hold it right by just by the back of the crust. It stays up nice. All right, now the moment of test here. Let's see what we think. I'm gonna go like this. Mmm. It tastes like a nice sweet strawberry. Mmm. It's got just the right amount of tart. It's extremely like it's just as cold as it'll ever get in the fridge. You can put it in the freezer, give it a little. A little more texture too but it will freeze hard so you take it out maybe 15 20 minutes before you want to eat it mm. Mm. well now that is good you can clearly see it's uh, mm. all right that gotta take me another minute minute and a half to eat that don't need to put down the video anyways i know it's excellent though and i'll be eating another one right after that definitely have a pie going in me hope you like these guys anyway thanks bye